You just got paid and it couldn't have come sooner. You have to pay off your credit card, buy new clothing, and try that restaurant your friends told you about. And now your money's all gone. Now you wait for the cycle to continue next payday. However, if you keep this up, you will continue to live paycheck to paycheck and never reach your full financial potential. That's why today I'm gonna to be discussing the seven things you need to do immediately after getting paid. Let's go. The most important step is determining a financial baseline. So a lot of us go through life spending money here and there and not really keeping track of it. You know, we keep a mental note that, hey, last Thursday I spent 20 bucks at Applebee's and you know, I spent $15 on socks at Macy's on Wednesday, right? So we have a rough idea, but you know, we can forget over time and it's not always 100% accurate. So something that I strongly recommend is tracking your spending and a great way to do it and a simple way to do it is an Excel spreadsheet. All you have to do is list off the date, item, reason, cost, and any notes about the purchase. After doing this for a few months, you will get a clearer picture of how much you're actually spending and if it's in line with your budget. And if it's not, you can be proactive and make the changes there and then. Now, if you don't have a budget, a good starting off point is the 50-30-20 budget. 50% towards needs, so that could be rent, mortgages, and other expenses. 30% towards wants, so it could be movie tickets, dining out, and other things. And lastly, 20% towards savings, so your emergency fund and other retirement accounts. For more in-depth breakdown, I've already made a video on this topic, which you can now see on the side. Next is automating your finances. So when your bills are automatically paid off, it's a great feeling. You have the peace of mind knowing that your bills are being dealt with and you won't have to incur any late fees or penalties. You also save a lot of time and energy that you would have spent, you know, tracking down all of your bills to see if you've paid them off. So in the end, it makes your life a lot easier. On to the next one, which is paying yourself first. So a lot of people are programmed to pay other people first. So this could be your mortgage, rent, credit cards, utilities, car payments, and all sorts of stuff like that. Now, don't get me wrong. You still need to pay these. You have to pay these, but try paying yourself first. It could even be one to 5% of your paycheck. You want to pay yourself first because there will always be more bills and expenses. And unfortunately, you might get to the point where you won't have the opportunity to pay yourself at all. So by paying yourself first, you put the money to the side in your savings and you let it grow over time. This could be over months or even years. And at some point, you can eventually consider it as an emergency fund. These funds should only be accessed during an emergency and they should be roughly three to six months worth of expenses. This will also give you further peace of mind knowing that should an emergency come up, you'll be prepared. Now you're at the point where you start paying others. Of your debts, you should try to tackle the highest interest debts first. So ones with interest rates of above 8%. Paying more than the minimum required payment can also lower the length of the debt, but more importantly, lower the overall interest you pay. Depending on the debt and rate, you can be stuck with your debt for years and end up paying interest equal to half or even more of the initial debt. Now, when it comes to tackling your debt, there are two strategies you need to consider. The first one is the avalanche method, which is the more efficient of the two. Basically, you start off with a debt with the highest interest rate and you work your way down from there. The next approach to take is the snowball method. Now, this appeals to people from more from a psychological standpoint. So in a sense, you deal with the smallest debt first and you work your way up towards the biggest debt. So let's say the first one's $100 and you pay it off and you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. And then you keep going and you keep going and it builds your confidence, it builds your motivation, but also it builds momentum, which will help you deal with the bigger debts eventually when you have to tackle them. Next up on our list is retirement accounts. So saving for the future is important and the sooner you start, the better. So it doesn't really matter in the beginning if you start with a couple dollars or a couple hundred dollars because it will pay off drastically in the end. But you will also get the added benefit of compound interest, which some people consider is the eighth wonder of the world. So yeah, if you earn a salary, chances are your company has a 401k. So eventually when you decide to start contributing to it, your company will actually match your contributions to a certain point. Also from a personal investing standpoint, you should open up a Roth IRA. Now, this is a retirement account that uses post-tax money, meaning your investments will grow tax-free, which is great. And as of 2024, the max you can contribute is $7,000 and this amount usually goes up every single year. Now, one that you may not consider is getting gas. Another relief that you can have is a full tank of gas. So let's say you're late to work and you're rushing. 
you have a half a slice of toast in your mouth and your arms are holding everything you need for the day and you're rushing and you get to your car and it's nearly empty. Great. Now you're going to have to get some gas and you're going to be even more late. So after you get paid, get some gas. If you have the time, go to the cheapest one, even if it's a little bit away, because that 10 minute trip could be worth it if it costs 20 cents less compared to the one right around the corner. And finally, groceries. Having enough food for the week is essential because it's one less thing to worry about. You don't have to go out for lunch, you don't have to go out for dinner, and it saves you a ton of money. That exact same dish at a restaurant could be four times more expensive than if you made it at home. So keep that in mind and buy groceries. So yeah, those are the seven steps that you should follow right after getting paid. If you have any other steps that you follow, put them in the comments down below. And until then, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.